So we've got almost a month left in the transfer window, but we're going to have a look at who's done the best business so far with the Premier League uh, campaign starting a week on Friday. Both Dan, Olivia and Kwaku have, uh, have made a choice themselves. And Dan, we'll start with you. And I bet you everybody can guess who you're going to <laughs> in, fa in fairness, we've all picked a team age and I didn't have the first pick. So I think there's only maybe four teams in the Premier League that, that you yeah, can pick. We and Villa on that, were one we? of them. Yeah. Olivia was going quite heavy on Villa, to be fair. Yeah, I was, when yeah. we were discussing it. How so. many weeks has it taken you to, or how many shows has it taken you to get Villa into the. Uh, this is my fifth <laughs> show since we've, we've come back. And I think it's the first time I've uttered the words after Villa. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I can't that's, be. Accused well, that's, of that's nonsense for a start. <laughs> Tell you that. <laughs> anyway, First let's get anyway, let's get minutes, let's forget maybe. that. Let's get on to the to the best position. I just think Villa ended the season really well under Unai Emery. If the season had started when he came in, Villa would have been in the top three, four. So there's been undoubted progress over since he's come in. And I think they made three very clever signings, three signings who've all got experience of playing European football, got experience of that Thursday, Sunday, which not many of the Villa squad have. I think they're in the position where they don't actually have to rush. Any of the new signings in, I don't think you'll see Torres and Tillemans go straight into the team because the central midfield partnership and the centre-back partnership has been so good under Unai Emery. And then you add Diaby into the mix up front, who's a, a really, really exciting player. I watched him the other night against Brentford. He is absolutely electric. He, he was linking up with John McGinn, an absolute treat. So you think of the improvement in the players that were already there in the time Emery was there with the pre-season, with those three bits of quality added. I just think Villa are in a really good place, got the business done early so that the players have had a pre-season as well. And if the window shut tomorrow, I'd be pretty happy with where Villa are at. And in terms of the outgoings, you haven't lost anybody that you were desperate to keep? That's the thing. I, think, I don't think there's a star man at Villa. I think the star man is the manager. Villa have built this, a good squad now over a number of years. They just had a manager previously. They didn't know how to get anything out of them. You now look at that squad and under Emery. And I think it's, it's a squad that's going places and if the coefficients align and fifth players can get Champions League, I honestly don't think it's beyond the rounds of possibility that Villa can finish fifth, finish seventh last season. I think we're in for a really exciting season. Shaking your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the things that you don't see at home is the, the arguments off air. <laughs> this week, the battle between Aston Villa and Chelsea fans has that been... Quite that needs to be something. a poll. Who finishes higher next season after no, Villa or Chelsea? I'm, I'm trying Chelsea to keep it away from the show, but <laughs> I thought there was going to be fisticuffs at some point. Right, so that's Aston Villa that Dan has uh, shockingly gone for. But, uh, Olivia, who have you gone for? Um, surprisingly, I've so actually gone surprising. for Arsenal. Um, I think one of the problems last season for Arsenal was strength and depth. I think it was inexperience when it mattered. Gabriel Jesus actually came out and said it was a young squad. We got nervous at, at just the wrong time. I mean, the signing of Declan Rice for me is one of the signings, if not the signing of the summer. I think he starts in near enough every team in world football. Maybe now that Gundogan's gone, he starts for Man City. Maybe not Real Madrid. They're the, they're the team that are jumping out at me. But pretty much every other squad. I think Kai Havertz is an interesting one. He's obviously a very versatile player. We're unsure whether he'll start for Arsenal. I think he has been in pre-season. Not sure. Mikel Arteta came out and said we're not quite sure where his best position is, but he is a versatile player, can play a lot of positions in that front line and in midfield. And Urien Timber as well, back up for right back, but also he's played left back. Um, in pre-season as well. So I think just adding to what they already had was important and I now think they have a squad in a much better position um, to rival Manchester City for the Premier League. I do think they need more outgoings. That might be the one criticism of Arsenal this, this transfer window is that they do need to now get players out but because they have got quite a big squad. But in terms of incomings, I think they're definitely up there. Yeah, because in terms of the kind of key players, I guess Shaka's the, yeah, Shaka the, went yeah. out but that was in order to help fund... Declan Rice, yeah. of course. So we've had Aston Villa, we've had Arsenal and Quaker. Who have you gone for? Of course, this is so far. There's still, like I say, almost a month left in the window. Yeah, I'll, I'll slate him down for picking his own team. I'll pick my own team as well. I'll pick Chelsea. <laughs> right. um, it's more about, obviously, the, the incomings here for Chelsea. And it's clear the direction Chelsea are going in, in terms of youth. In Kunku was the deal that Chelsea fans knew, uh, knew about early on. But Nicholas Jackson is a player we've talked about on the show, mm -hmm. who's impressed in pre-season for Chelsea. And some youngsters that are probably going to go back out on loan. Um, and 
it's the outgoings I want to focus on for Chelsea, though. It's getting that business done. In the previous life or under a different regime, Chelsea would have loaned a lot of those players out. If you look at players like Christian Pulisic, Edouard Mendy, I'm looking at those players that may be on the fringes of the squad now, Kaladu Koulibaly. Chelsea managed to recoup a fee for those players. Um, and the previous regime is their front and centre. If you look at Timu Bakayoko, who's a player who's only just left Chelsea, he's a player who had multiple loans. And that's what Chelsea would have done uh, in days gone by. But you look at Kai Havertz, Mason Mount, Mateo Kovacic, despite the fact they've gone to rivals of Chelsea, Chelsea have managed to recoup quite big fees for those players. And so it's more about the outgoings and the incomings for Chelsea. And the fact that they've done a lot of this business before the season's begun is in stark contrast to last season, where Chelsea had a mess of a pre-season. The business was all over the place. And by the time okay, the season... OK, so good off, work from Chelsea. Right, OK, good morning. Transfers returns at 9 o'clock tomorrow. And we've got transfer talk back in two hours' time at midday. Sorry to cut you off mid, mid flow there. <laughs> right. I think more earpiece has come out. Transfer yeah. shows at 5 pm and 7 pm, but on the way next, plenty more transfer news on Sky Sports. You will hear from Pochettino.